The news coming out of Russia is grim. Ukraine's attack on the Kursk region has attracted most attention, but the incursion also represents a symbolic blow. Other information coming out of Russia also suggests hard times ahead for Russians, writes William Pomerantz, a senior fellow at the Wilson Center, calling Russia the sick man of Eurasia. Kursk is a sacred place in Soviet military folklore, where the Red Army won one of the most decisive and glorious victories of World War II. Today, Kursk is a symbol of military retreat and incompetence, exposing all the vulnerabilities that are now dragging Russia into this conflict of its own choosing. Deliberately comparing it to the Ottoman Empire, Russia today can be called the sick man of Eurasia. Russia is engaged in a war of attrition in which, despite its vaunted resilience, it now faces disaster on several fronts. The quick operation is now in its third year, and Moscow's only hope is that Ukraine is as exhausted as Russia. Putin has created a false narrative about the necessity of the conflict. In addition, Russia is going into battle with poorly trained conscripts who are now increasingly deserting. The FSB has used this opportunity to purge high-ranking generals against whom numerous criminal cases have been brought. The Defense Ministry is now headed by an economist with no military experience. His last advice was to rely on robots and AI, even though the standoff has left Russia with catastrophic losses in workers and engineers as well as access to technology. Moreover, the loss of life, especially in a country experiencing a serious demographic crisis, only foreshadows future problems. The coming collapse Putin and the Russian state are at the height of a social explosion. The attack on Kursk may be one catalyst, but there are other potential triggers. A partial list includes the loss of its status as an energy superpower, rising food prices and labor shortages. Russia's economy is in shambles, with corporate bankruptcies on the rise and high interest rates for Russians seeking private loans. Putin's approval rating appears to have slipped, significantly, seemingly escaping the heavy hand of Russia's censors. Finally, Russia will no longer be able to claim the fashionable title of an emerging market, but will essentially be off-limits until the problems of all the deprivatized Western companies that Putin handed over to his cronies are resolved. It is no surprise that trust among Russian citizens is at an all-time low. Putin's inner circle includes relatives and his former bodyguard. The oligarchs seem to have no influence on government policy, and even the Russian press reports Putin's popularity is declining. Putin adds more responsibilities, but will likely only be blamed for weakening Russia's position. Israel's military said Wednesday it carried out attacks targeting Hezbollah militants in southern Lebanon after dozens of rockets were fired at Israel. The military said Israeli air defenses intercepted some of the 65 rockets, while others fell in open areas. After intensive aerial attack on Kafra, southern Lebanon the Israeli army the brother of an important Hezbollah member was killed. In a statement, Hezbollah's military media wing announced the death of Abbas Anissa Yub, who was born in 1988 and is from Sila, southern Lebanon. The Ministry of Health's Emergency Operations Center confirmed Ayyub's death, adding that the attack injured another person. Security reports said that the Israeli army carried out at least three raids to target Ayyub. Israeli warplanes and artillery continued operations in southern border villages, including Ida al-Shab, Farkila and Maiz al-Jabal. Israeli Army spokesperson Avichay Adri said that its aircraft attacked sites in Jebain, Zatar al-Charki, and Ramya. He added that, more than 10 Hezbollah military infrastructures and launch pads were attacked, as they were posing a threat to Israeli civilians. Weapons and missile depots of Hezbollah in southern Lebanon were bombed by Israeli fighter jets. Israeli media reported an explosion of a drone in the Yara area in western Galilee, and damage inside the settlement of Ramat Neftali in Upper Galilee after rockets fell inside the settlement. Fighting along the Israel-Lebanon border has raised fears of a widening regional conflict amid the war between Israel and Hamas militants in the Gaza Strip. Oh, my God.